Well, hello. Welcome again to our church school lesson. We have another uh, interesting lesson for tonight or today. So before we begin, allow me just a moment to ask God to bless us as we study this lesson. Dear Lord, here we are once again asking a special blessing upon all of those who will be listening and viewing this video in the future or in just a few days, Lord. Please bless them. Give them the understanding that we all need to know about your word. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity. We thank you for giving me uh, the courage to do this. And thank you for blessing my understanding that I might be willing to want to share it with others. Now, Lord, bless the bereaved and the sick everywhere. Please, Lord, have mercy on us all. And Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, hello. Uh, glad to have you uh, with me as we study this lesson. We have a very interesting lesson on uh, tonight or today, whenever you will take the time to study this lesson, but we're going to be studying out of the book of Amos. And Amos was a minor prophet, and he is coming to the people of Israel uh, with a message from the Lord and how he, uh, God wants them to change their ways and, and to have uh, a great uh, culture to live in and not keep following the other ones. So, without any other delay, let's check and let's go to our slide and see what we're studying on tonight. Okay, as you can see, we're, we're almost done with this book and we're still talking about success and failure. This is unit three, which is the last unit of this uh, book, Lessons and Warnings. This is lesson 12 of the, when we're studying out of the Union Gospel Press book. And our lesson uh, topic for today or tonight is a rebuke from the Lord. The time is AD 762, about 762 BC. The place is Bethel. Now, our uh, scriptures are coming from the book of Amos. And we're going to start at chapter 5, verse 14 through 15, and verse 18 through 27. And as our uh, Bible reference reading, as you can see, comes from the New Living Translation. Okay, our golden text is coming from that fifth chapter of Amos, and it's verse uh, 15. And it reads, hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. Perhaps even yet, the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnants of his people. Now, as you see, this lesson uh, has uh, consists of four outlines. The first one, a godly lifestyle. And that's in the fifth chapter of Amos, verse 14 and 15. The second outline is a fearful time and Amos 5, 18 through 20. And then the third outline, a rejected worship, Amos 5, 21 through 24. And then we our last outline, the fourth one is a deserved recompense. And that's still the book of Amos chapter 5, verse 25 through 27. So, as you see, we're we're studying in this minor uh, prophet uh, of Amos, the book of Amos. Now, during Amos' time, he was they considered minor because it's not very much written about him. He he's on the scene for a short time, but what they have to say is just as important as the other uh, books of the Bible. And in this lesson on tonight, we're gonna see. 
how the court system was uh, carrying on during this time of Amos's life. And what I found so interesting is some of these same uh, procedures and practices, even way back in ancient Israel time, they're doing it today in our judicial systems. So if you're like me, when I look at and start studying this, I, I said history does repeat itself. So, and as we see, we're going to see that this, this particular court setting and how they uh, came about to judge people, they did it at the gate. And the gate was considered their courthouse. And doing my research, it said that even at the gate, you know, a gate is the entrance of a city. But in this particular place, they had little outcoves, which little cutouts in the walls or the, or the, uh, or the gate where people would sit and they would judge uh, the people that were uh, brought to them for their crimes. But, you know, this was a rigged court. And a lot of times the rich got away with everything and the poor and the righteous people had to suffer. And don't you see that going on in our society today? So let's get into our lesson and let's go and look at our first outline. And the first outline, it says a godly lifestyle. And this is verse 14 and 15. Now, don't forget, I always use the uh, New Living Translation. And it reads, do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's army will be your helper just as you have claimed. Verse 15, hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into halls of justice. Perhaps even yet the Lord God heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnants of his people. Now, our first outline, like I said, is telling them to, to do what's good. Now, Amos is... Uh, a minor prophet, and he gets his instructions from the Lord on what to tell the people. Because right about now, the Lord is, is, is upset with the children of Israel because they're not living godly lifestyles. And God has sent Amos to give them this uh, stern warning that they needed to change their ways. And as we can see, like I said, the courts were held at the gate. That was like we have court systems where you go to the court and you sit in and you're uh, sworn in and you are uh, you observe what's going on. If you're one on the jury, you listen and you hear all the evidence. And then when you go to the jury room, you have to go over the evidence and judge rightly whether the person is rich or poor, whether he's godly or not. Justice no one is above the law. I've heard that so much in these past few months till it, it's like, okay, well, I know that. But some people feel like they are above the law, just like some of these Israelites have become uh, above themselves. So as we can see in this, our first outline where it says God is telling them, it's through Amos now, do what is good and run from evil. So that you may live because God is going to bring a uh, judgment on the people that have not followed his rules, his commands. And you know, every time they get in trouble, they will run to the Lord and plead for mercy and God will help them. In this case, God has uh, kept a stern eye on them and he wants his people to uh, turn from this evilness and seek good and as our book, as uh, the Union Gospel Press book says that it's like this chapter begins as a funeral uh, degurge. In other words, Amos is telling them, he's trying to teach to them about their evilness and what they're doing. So Amos is a, a very good speaker and he's telling Amos was really mourning the people because he had seen and he had heard what they were doing. So this is why it seemed like he was given uh, a speech at a funeral, because he was mourning, because 
He was mourning them because he could see the injustices and how they were still uh, doing things out of the will of God. So Amos was, um, he, he was, he, he was heartbroken. And when the Lord gave Amos these instructions, he let him know that they are to turn from that. He says, then the Lord of heaven's army will be your helper. And just as you have claimed, see, they will go around uh, talking about how good God was and what he did. And of course, he delivered them time and time again. But as we know, like last week's lesson, there comes a time when you have to pay the consequences of your uh, actions. And in this case, he's uh, letting them know God sees and he knows everything. So Israel uh, was to God was uh, Israel was to love God. They were to love God. But, you know, people will get up and say they love uh, another person, but they really don't love them. They just saying it to either uh, get something out of them or just to soothe the ear of the person they saying it to. So be careful when you say you love someone. But in this case, if you love God, keep his commandments. I know that we stumble and we make mistakes and we sin, but we know to get up and ask God to forgive us and keep his commandments. So now we know that this is part of their culture is how they hold court and they're doing this. And look, in verse 15, he's telling them to, uh, he says, hate evil and love what is good and turn your courts into courts, uh, to halls of justice. The Lord is telling Amos to tell them, hate evil. Don't do, don't be like, in other words, what you're doing is, is evil and to hate it. Now, you know, people hearing that is, will jump up and say, well, what is Amos talking about? What do you mean, hate evil? I'm not evil. They, they know they're doing evil things, but they don't want it exposed to them. And they don't want to be confronted with saying about hate something. You know, that probably set a bunch of them off because they were probably thinking, who do Amos think he is coming in telling us that we ought to hate evil? Is he calling us evil? God knows. And then he says, and love what is good. Turn the courts back into halls of justice. In other words, out of all these trials that were going on, they were using the courts to benefit themselves. There was no justice in the, in, at the gate. Even in our society today, in some courtrooms, there is no justice. There's justice for the rich or those that can uh, have high, uh, uh, high position. People are quickly to, to let them go and keep doing what they want. But poor people and a godly, a, a righteous person will go to court and have to suffer the consequences. There are a lot of people right now behind prison bars that are really innocent. And yes, I know every, every, everybody that go to prison always say, I didn't do it, I'm innocent. But some of them are innocent or some of them get uh, sentenced with hard times for doing minor things. Whereas those that do horrible things get off with just being on probation. So in this case, this is the same thing that was that's going on today was going on in the time of Amos and the Israelites. And he says, and then he says, perhaps even yet the Lord God, heaven's army, will have mercy on the remnants of his people. The remnants are the ones that believe. Those is like the little scraps that did nobody want. The remnants, the remnants are those that do their best to uphold God's word and how to uh and want to live right. But you know, when, when the day of uh, judgment come, everybody's going to have to give an account. That's why he's saying, and he says, and, and perhaps even the Lord God, heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnants of his people. The armies, that means that when God rained down justice, it will not uh, exclude certain people, but he'll have mercy. Because even those of us that are, are living uh, or trying to live a righteous life, we've got to stand before the judgment as well. So that's what he's telling them. That he says, what did he say? Uh, a godly lifestyle. Put away, even those of us today, put away those things that are evil 
and, and in, in doing things just to please our flesh. Put that kind of lifestyle away because one day you're going to have to give an account. I'm going to have to give an account. The judgment will not just be for the wicked, but it's for us also to see. So God show us just how we've, uh, how, how well we've done or how where we where we didn't come up to standards. Okay. Now let's look at our next outline. And as you can see, it says a fearful time. Look, look what the Lord have Amos to write and to tell him. It says, what sorrow awaits you who say, if uh, if only the day of the Lord were were here. You have no idea what you are wishing for. That day will bring darkness, not light. In that day, you will be like a man who runs from the lion only to meet a bear. Escaping from the bear, he leans his hand against the wall in his house and is bitten by a snake. Verse 20. Yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless without a ray of joy or hope. Now, as you can see how it opens up and he's telling them, he says, what Amos says, what sorrow awaits them in trouble is coming. That's what he's telling them. Trouble. You don't know. You don't know. You think it's hard now and you think you're getting away with everything and you're, you're thinking that it's going to be all, all sunshine and bright. Look what Amos said. He says, what sorrow awaits you who say, if only the day of the Lord was were here. Look, look in the King James. It says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what ends is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. See, they they were they knew religious sayings, they knew religious practice, they had been taught this. Some of them do it, they practice religious stuff uh just for the moment, but still go and live like they want. And they always said, Oh, let the day of the Lord come. I'll be glad when the day of the Lord come. They thinking that the day of the Lord was gonna come and every their enemies were going to be destroyed and that they were going to be uh mighty they're going to be able to conquer all the land but this is not what the day of the lord refers to in this lesson and look in there when it says uh and the king james says as if a man he's talking about now a man is walking along and he see a lion he managed to escape the lion but then when he gets so far, when he turn around to meet a bear, okay, he escaped that bear. And when he gets to his house, he's so tired of running and stuff. When he go to put his hand on the wall to brace himself, because I'm sure the way Amos want this to see, he's out of breath, but he hadn't escaped the judgment. Guess what? He put his hands on the wall and a snake bites him. This is what he's telling about turning from your sin and, and you talking about the day of darkness. Now, you might get away with uh, gambling and you hadn't really, nobody really knew it, but you, but now God knows and you lost all your money. And then you, you managed to uh, recoup and be able to do something with your money. Well, that's like the line. You escaped that particular sin. You got away, managed to kind of maneuver out of that. Look what he says. Then when the man, uh, got away from the lion, he ran into a bear. He managed to outmaneuver the bear and run to the house, just like us. We might not have gotten caught. We made a little money from gambling and we got that and we know it was wrong. Then we turn around and we go back the next day and we ha we go and gamble some more and we we lose almost the money, all of it. We get enough to go back home. That's that second bear. That's that second uh uh a judgment that we'd have missed. But then when we get home, we think, oh, well, I'm I'm good. Nobody knew I was gambling. I paid, I got enough to uh, maybe hold me over to the next payday and I need to take a breath. But just like the man, when he put his hand on the wall, he wasn't looking. He thought he had escaped. There's another uh, warning, a uh, 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 chance to, that the man, this time he get bitten by that snake. This time, 
when we commit these sins, uh, there's a judgment coming. We are caught. We cannot uh, deny it. We have to suffer the consequences. And that's what he's saying about out of all that. He 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 outran. He, he got away from the lion. He outran the bear and he go home. He didn't even see the snake. Now, those other two things he saw because he thought he had gotten away and escaped. So when he got home, he didn't realize that that other problem that he thought he had escaped was right there. He didn't even see it, and he had to pay the consequences, and the consequences was he was bitten. That was That's the little metaphor that Amos used so that they could see this. And because they really thought that the day of judgment was going to be such, it was going to be all the darkness was going to be gone. It wasn't going to be nothing but uh, partying, having a good time, and doing all this. And then look in verse um, in verse 20. He says, yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless without any ray of hope. You see, they they was under the impression, uh, under the impression that the day of the Lord meant that everything was going to be fine. They weren't going to all see all them guilty people, all them that did that sinning and all that stuff. They're going to be wiped out. They're not going to be around. They're not going to be none of that. But Amos is telling them, you you got the wrong uh, conception of the day of the Lord. But the the day of the Lord is going to be darkness. There's not going to be no bright sun shining and and all your enemies going to be crushed and everything. You're going to have all the power. He's saying, no, this is not how, this is not the day of the Lord. But they really thought that they, once everything was done and, and all, and they was going to have uh, justice and all the bad people was going to be pushed down or died, and they was going to live uh, uh, prosperous lives. They're going to they gonna have a mighty army and all of that. That was not the day of the Lord. They had the wrong understanding. They, those who were ungodly, would find no relief upon the arrival of the day of the Lord. They would find instead judgment or God's uh, pursuing them and sending them uh, in sending them something of great danger. They had the whole. See, you know, one thing about it, we get up and we think that this is going to this this oh when the Lord comes back. Oh, what a time, what a time. Do you know the judgment is coming first? There won't be no. Uh, immediate uh, uh, death of everything and then sin and all of that, what we've done will just go away and forgive me. No, there's judgment coming in the day of the Lord. The judgment is, is bleak. It won't be no sunshine. There won't be no sunshine. There is darkness. And where there's darkness, there's destruction and suffering. And it says our, uh, uh, we may escape the justices, the justice that they were having right then, like the people that go to court now, the injustices, they might escape it, but there will be another, there'll be another judgment. And that judgment, nobody is going to escape it. Everybody will have to endure it. And then we, uh, for God, want us to live godly lives. He want us to, and what I mean by godly lives, is to love everyone, to respect others, to have mercy on others, not just what makes me happy. No, he wants us to live a godly life. And those that are ungodly will suffer more in the day of the Lord than those that are righteous. And they'll always say those that are doing their best to live for the Lord. And that's what he's trying to get them. He wanted them that that fearful time about the day of the Lord, that's that's a fearful time, y'all. It's not going to be easy. It won't be uh, 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 all of a sudden party over here and party over there. No, there is going the day of the Lord. And people right now will say, oh, I'd be glad when it's the day of the Lord. I don't think they really understand it themselves even today. Just remember, day of the Lord is not a, a, a quick hurricane that come and wipe everything out and then all of us that were righteous and godly people are going to be in charge and living high like those that were living over us. 
No, there is judgment and everyone will have to look at that. The Lord, the Lord knows and he sees and he sees everything. He is unhappy with these Israelites, just like he's unhappy with us and the way we live and carry on. So now let's see what our next outline is. And as we see, the next outline, a rejected worship, and it's coming from uh, verse, chapter 5, uh, verse 21 through 24, and it reads, I hate all your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assembles, assemblies. I will not accept your burnt offerings and game and grain offerings. I won't even notice all of your choice peace offerings. He said in verse 23, away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to those musics of your hearts. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, of endless rivers flowing, uh, uh, endless river of righteous living. And as you can see now, the Lord is not happy. This is not, this, he's telling them, he, he calling them out. He know these fake worshipers. He know them. He's calling it out. Look how the, uh, listen how the King James said, he says, I hate. That's an insult to anyone that someone walk up to you and say, I just hate you. That's an insult to you. That word hate on another human being is just, Cruel. I mean, but the Lord is saying, I hate. He didn't say that he just uh he hated them because they were still his children. What he hated was what they were doing. He then King James say, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn, I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. In other words, when they gathered and did all these feasts and burnt offerings, and he could smell that aroma, he said, I don't want to smell it no more. I don't want, I don't want to smell it. I don't want to, I don't want to hear about your, I don't want to hear about the feast days. He says, and look in verse 22 of the King James, he says, though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat beast. Now, you know, they were in a, they were in a pickle, y'all. They, the Lord is telling them, he don't want, I, you know, I don't want nothing y'all got. I don't want it, even though that he gave these uh, rituals and things to Moses so that the people would live according to his commandment. And in this case, he's telling them, I don't want, I don't, I'm through with y'all. I don't had enough. Look what he says. He says, take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. He says, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Even, even looking back at our new living and where he said, he said, take, he said, I won't even, I don't want your burn offerings, your grain off. In other words, when we, he's telling them all this stuff that they, they rituals and they practices that they did to offer to God so that God could bless them. He told them, I don't want it no more. I don't want to hear. I don't even want to hear you singing. I don't want it because you're not living a, 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 a righteous and just life. You are pretending. We have this same um, stuff going on in our churches today. I don't care if you're Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, uh, uh, Hindu or, or, or Jewish or whatever. We all know the rituals of our religious practice, but those rituals are not who we really are. We know how to dress up and go to the Lord's house. We know how to pray those same prayers. We know how to do this. But when we do that and we don't live that practice that we do, God is not pleased with us. He's telling us, I don't even want to hear it. I don't want you to bring me your, your offering. You're bringing me your money offering. But you you're cheating the people uh, that you're doing business with. He said, I don't even want your money. He said, you cannot you cannot bring me that, and your heart is not right. And that's what he's telling them. He don't even he says, take away your noisy hymns of praise. 
<laughs> that when I thought about that, have you ever been in a church or a concert and the person that's singing, they all they off key, they're they're just all over the place, and you're sitting there thinking, oh, they're singing bad. What this? In other words, God is like, I don't want to hear that singing. That singing is nothing. I know sometimes when I'm sitting and someone is singing, I grant you, I'm no singer, but I can hear when someone is out of tune. I can hear when they're off key, but for them to keep going on and on and on, and you're sitting there thinking, oh, sit down. They need to stop singing. They can't say anything. Do you know, turn it over and look how God sees us. He's listening and they singing praise. He said, they singing today but they'll be cussing tomorrow. He said, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear your songs. I don't want to hear your, your I don't want to accept your offerings because you are, you are unjust and you're pretending. We got our church rituals down so packed. We look holy. We act holy. We sing a holy. We, we know how to stand up. We know when to kneel down. We know when to bow our head, all of that. But we don't live that when we are outside of our uh, places of worship, we get out and we do uh, things that are not pleasing to God. We can't take God an offering to the church and hating on your own brother. God will not accept that offering. He tells us in some of those, he say, leave your offering and go and make it right with your brother. This is what he's trying to tell him because he knew they're doing all this and they're pretending they know how to they know how to get up and make this noise, but yet and still, when they get in the courtyard, they're not, they're crucifying people and sending people to jail and those that they can bribe and get money from, they let them go. They free. Isn't that what's going on in our court system today? We need to be very careful. God is still watching us. And then he tells them, he says, instead of all of that, he said, instead, I want you to see a mighty flood of justice. He says, I want you to see this. I want justice to run down like the rivers of water. He wanted justice to flow everywhere, not to the rich, not to those in high position. No, to everyone. And that's what he says. He says, and an endless river of, li of righteous living, righteous living, being uh, doing things in a, in a way that God wants them done. So now let's look at our last outline and we'll be ready to uh, close out. And it reads, a deserved recompense. A recompense, all that means is you, uh, what's going to happen. You are going to have to uh, be spanked. And this starting at verse 25. Was it me? Was it to me you were bringing sacrifices and offering during the 40 years in the wilderness, Israel? No, you served the pagan gods, uh, Shuku and the king of Shukan, your star gods, the images you made for yourselves. Remember, he talked about those our gods, but he's telling them, didn't I do all this for you back then? So, I will send you into exile to, uh, to a land east of Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of heaven's army. Now, they receive a deserved recompense. In other words, he's getting ready. God is letting them know, I'm going to turn you over. You are going to go into exile. He says, I, I took care of you for 40 years. And I told you about those owl gods. Cause see, they still had little owls going on in, back at the house or wherever, out, you know, in closed doors. But in the open, they was acting like they was worshiping the one and only true God. But they was worshiping these pagan gods. And he told them not, you know, I told you not to do that. Even when you came out of Israel, he told them, don't bring those pagan gods to strong. But, you know, people that uh, enjoy seeing they don't give it up right away. They think they can put some of it away and it'll be all right. No, sin is sin. When God tell you don't do it, that's what he means, don't do it. And then he says, he says, look what he told them. The recompense is other words. Um, here come your punishment. So I will send you into exile to the land east of Damascus. In other words, he, he sent them away from the promised land. He was sending them to where they were going to be uh, uh 
punished. This is what they're talking about, God's righteous punishment. That's what this recompense uh, recompense means. God, he, he let them know. He sent them there, and Amos had to tell them, this is what's going to happen. You are going to be sent. You are going to be taken away in captivity, and you're going beyond Damascus. And the Lord said, in, in whose name the Lord of hosts, Amos let them know, I'm not telling you, this is what the Lord is saying, that you're going to be driven out. And, you know, each time those uh, Amorites, uh, the Hittites, and all, they put it on the Israelites. In this case, the Lord is, he, he's drive them out of the land that he had given to them. It's going to take them a whole lot to get back. The people to whom Amos ministers, were doing exactly what the ancestors had did, a mixture of following rituals of the Mosaic law and worshiping idols. You can't do, you can't serve two masters. You either gonna have to serve the Lord, God Himself, and Him only. Moses already told him that. Today we have those that are worshiping idol gods. They come in and they're pretending to be high position people, bishops, uh, doctors, and, and all of this in the religious sphere. But don't you know that God sees this and he know that this worship is fruitless. This is just a front because they idol God is how much money they can get, how much of your money that you take and give to them, not the benefit of the church. They live in luxury lives where you are living in an apartment or you living in, in, a, in a tenement building. But in this case, God wants the ones that are doing this, to, he's finna, everybody is finna be driven out. And our last part, it says, their pretense of worship uh, never fooled God. Those people that's coming in and they, they just worshiping because it's a ritual, you can't fool God. And when the time comes for him, to deal with them for their wickedness, he moved decisively, thus uh, fulfilling his warning. When God gets ready to move, no one will be able to stop him. He is going to correct us. We will be judged. Now, remember, the day of the Lord is not going to be a party time. It's not going to be where all the enemies have been uh, driven out and put to death. No, the day of the Lord is going to be darkness. There's going to be crying and, and the wrenching of their hands and all this. And even those of us that are righteous and try to offer true justice to people, we're still going to have to give an account also. So as I end this lesson, I hope that it's beneficial to you and that you will be able to study it and look at Amos and the job that Amos had. I would not have wanted to be Amos because, you know, the people turned on Amos when he when he let them know that uh, God see you all. And this is thus says the Lord. And this is a rebuke from the Lord. Amen. May God bless and keep you. Uh, would you please hit the uh, little thumbs up button to let uh, the YouTube platform know that this is uh, worthwhile and that you enjoy it. And then even if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until the next time, may God bless and keep you all. And I'll see you next week.